we're going to start by looking at a definition that's really a little bit strange at first. It's kind of a, not really obvious at all as to why this is so important. However, as unusual as this definition is, it leads to an incredible amount of different things, including one of the most important properties in group theory. So we're going to start with a group and H be some subset of that group. Then you take an element of the group, doesn't have to be inside the subset, just any element of the group, and we're going to say that AH is basically the set where you take that element A times each element of the subset. AH is specifically multiplication on the left. We could do the same thing with multiplying on the right or even something we're going to call conjugation. Let's not worry about the conjugation right now. Let's focus mainly on the left and the right multiplication stuff here. Now, that thing, the AH and HA, is defined for any subset. But what we really care about is when that subset is actually a subgroup of G. And when we do have that subgroup, we're going to call these things cosets. If we're multiplying on the left, we'll call them left cosets. If we're multiplying on the right, we're going to call them right cosets. And then we can then talk about the number of elements in those cosets and things like that. Now, that's a lot to digest, so let's take a look at an example. Let's say my group, G, is equal to S4. And the subgroup that I want to look at is the subgroup that has the identity. It has 1, 2, 3, 4. It has 1, 3, 2, 4. And it has 1, 4, 3, 2. Now, I'll leave it to you to verify that that actually is a subgroup, but I should just point out that it's actually a cyclic subgroup. 1, 2, 3, 4 is a generator for that subgroup. Okay, so what we're going to do is to take any element of G. Again, does not have to be an element of H. So, for example, let's take the element 1, 3. So to do 1, 3, H, we're taking 1, 3 times each element of H. Well, 1, 3 times the identity is, of course, just going to be 1, 3. If we do 1, 3 times 1, 2, 3, 4, One goes to two, and then two doesn't go anywhere. Two goes to three, three goes back to one. Three goes to four, four doesn't take it anywhere there. Four goes to one, one goes to three. So there we go. It's one, two, three, four. Now taking one, three times this next one, Well, notice that 1, 3 is its own inverse, so those will cancel each other out, and I'm just left with 2, 4. For 1, 4, 3, 2, so if I take 1, 3 times 1, 4, 3, 2, 1 goes to 4, 4 goes to 3, which goes to 1, 2 goes to 1, which goes to 3. 3 goes to 2. So 1, 4, 2, 3. So that coset is that set of all four of those things. We took the single element 1, 3, multiplied it by each element of H to create its own subset. Now, 
A few things that are worth noting, even from this simple example. Notice that this is a subset, but not a subgroup. Even though H was a subgroup, 1, 3, H is not a subgroup. If nothing else, we can see it doesn't have the identity element in there, so it can't be a subgroup. Let's do another one here. We'll still take that same H, but let's go ahead and do 2, 4, H. So again, I'm taking 2, 4 times the elements here. 2, 4 times E is going to give me 2, 4. 2, 4 times 1, 2, 3, 4. 1 goes to 2 goes to 4. 4 goes to 1. 2 goes to 3. 3 goes to 4 goes to 2. I can take 2, 4 times 1, 3, 2, 4. And one of the things that we mentioned is that disjoint cycles commute. Since disjoint cycles commute, I can just, in general, permutation multiplication is not abelian. But in this case, because they're disjoint, they do commute. I could cancel them out and be left with 1, 3. Finally, if I had 2, 4 times 1, 4, 3, 2, 1 goes to 4 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 2 goes to 4, 4 goes to 3, And now we notice that this coset, 2, 4, H, is the same thing as 1, 3, H. The order in which the elements came up was different, but we got the exact same elements in that coset. We're going to talk more about this, but the reason that happened is because 2, 4 was in this coset here. Any time you take an element that's in a different coset and create the coset of that element, it's going to give you the same coset. This video is getting a little long, so I do want to do more examples of coset stuff. Let's do it in the next video.